Well, guys, the plan failed. We have um, not won the league this season again. So for the second season in a row, we're going to probably wind up in second place. Our match um, coming up next against Ilao and Toamata will uh, determine whether we're in second place or third place. Lionheart did win that final match. And so um, if we had won, we would still kind of have a mountain to climb because they would eventually have to lose. That means that the uh, plan of uh, going and taking away all of their good players um, has not succeeded. We go uh, look at their senior squad schedule. They ended up winning against Ilao and Toamata with an uh, equalizer in the 66th minute and then a uh, goal here in the 91st minute to uh, put it away. And uh, that's uh, just sort of the way the cookie crumbles there for us. Um, Baja Tua, who played for us previously um, and who was injury prone, um, uh, ends up uh, getting the equalizer for them. And uh, that's kind of the way that this one works. So we do have one match left, like I said, and that's going to be uh, tomorrow's main match. A couple of things, though, that I do want to do. And the big one here is uh, we're going to uh, kind of go ballistic on this guy, Afa Famuana. Um, I'm not sure if I want to release him outright or just put him straight down into the um, under-18s. Um, I probably should put him into the under-18s, but he's not going to play again for quite some time. That was really, really, really poor. Um, I mean, he was in very, very good form beforehand, and then this is uh, one of the worst matches he's had, and he gave up a goal directly at the end of the match um, on a play that he shouldn't have given up a goal for. So we are going to go after him with everything that we have, and um, we are going to uh, let him know what we think about him and what we think about how he's been doing. And uh, we are also going to uh, stick him over onto the under-18 squad, and we are going to unregister him because that is just simply unacceptable, and we're, <laughs> we're not going to do this anymore. So uh, the difficulty continues. You would think you would think that it's not that hard here um, to get this to work, but um, it is actually quite difficult um, to uh, get a team that actually can play together and that um, actually can win. And so uh, he has been completely unregistered, and we'll see if he uh, comes back with any sort of upset feelings. Finding him for two weeks' wages is going to make him upset, and that's the thing that you uh, know is going to happen. But um, that performance was completely unacceptable. We can't, um, uh, we can't uh, accept that at all. We can't just sort of sit back and watch as uh, the uh, season completely falls apart uh, because um, the uh, uh, left back decided that uh, he was tired of trying and uh, you know took the ball and gave it away to the opposing player like that. That's one of the worst uh, defensive uh, uh, decisions I think I've ever seen a football manager, and that includes playing at the uh, amateur level with a number of other teams. I've seen a lot of bad things happen. I've seen a lot of weird things happen, but but uh, that goal was um, absolutely ridiculous, and there was no reason for it. Um, and so, like I said, you know, when you go back and you look at the uh, match overall, the rest of the team played well. We just didn't score. Um, but um, that was uh, definitely a play that uh, was uh, uncalled for, and um, you know, really shouldn't have happened. Um, the big question I think that we have going forward is whether we're going to be able to get a, a good goaltender or not. Um, to uh, try kind of buttress up this squad. And that's something that's really difficult to do. So it's a little bit easier here in American Samoa than it is than it was in uh, China when we were there and we could only have Chinese goaltenders and uh, that kind of uh, limited our selection. Here in American Samoa, we can, I think, according to the rules, get basically anybody that we want, uh, but they have to actually be willing to come over to our squad. So um, we'll see what happens. But yeah, 29 goals conceded is not great and we should be able to um, do a little bit better um, than we have been um, overall. Um, yeah, okay, so this guy who's uh, this guy who I just went in for, who is from where he is from Mali, um, looks like that has become uh, public information. I don't really care one way or another. We're going to go forward here um, another step. Um, if you're watching this, of course, you can see um, how long it takes me to go from uh, one step to another. And yeah, you can see if I'm Moana. Um, feels really upset about that, um, that he was fined uh, for uh, two uh, weeks uh, worth of no pay um, for uh, his really, really poor play. But, um, I mean, like we said, you know, he's only 16 years old. He can still improve. You know, I don't know. We can take a look here quickly at his uh, training and his uh, training progress and stuff. I mean, he has made some progress, you know, probably likely from playing so many matches. Um, but, uh you know, we need to see some better progress than this. We need to see a much better um, approach than that. Um, fairly determined, which is really not actually a great uh, 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 personality to have because I wonder more about his professionalism. And, um, I mean, he just needs to be able to make better decisions than that. That was awful for a guy who apparently has some sort of decision-making ability. That definitely didn't showcase his decision-making ability at all. That was just bad. That was just bad. And, um, yeah, that was a... Absolutely, absolutely ridiculous um, performance uh, by him. 
<laughs> the media thinks that his club form merits an international call-up. Well, definitely not in that last match, not if you want the international team to actually win. So uh, the big problem that we have now, of course, is left-back and what we do for that. I guess Twala lately could theoretically play left-back. Um, I don't know. We'll see what we can figure out. We'll go over here to the scouting real quick and take a look. Um, we look at our scout priorities. You know, the players who um, we want to sign, we've already signed. If uh, you haven't been signed by us yet and we know about you, then you're probably not good enough. You can see we're looking at a whole bunch of guys who are about 18 or so, uh, something like that, you know. I don't know. We might want to look over here to uh, players in range and see if we can find anything in terms of uh, left back. As you can see, I'm looking at a bunch of guys who are new gens. Um and just sort of see what we have to choose from. I mean, we could look at this guy, but he's inconsistent. So, yeah, we're not going to grab him. This guy's inconsistent. Walter Hassan, we know about his problems with consistency. F. Fetual has problems with consistency, <laughs> right? Ken Collins, consistency problems. Petuliki Gray, again, consistency. And Pagolatu, problems with consistency. This is the problem that we have. The players that uh, we probably would want to get um, all have uh, these types of problems. We might get to the point where we see somebody like this and we just see if we can't go directly in for him. But the problem, of course, is that he's 17. But look at that. You know, he might actually want to go straight over for us so we can go ahead and pick him out. Um, and uh, this is just because I don't want to take the time to scout these guys. Let's go ahead and sign them. Uh, and this guy, Tua, again, because he's 17, doesn't think that uh, it's the right move for his development. So something that you're used to, and so you have a whole bunch of kind of worthless guys to choose from. Now, we could take uh, the uh, is new gen... Um, is not or whatever that thing is and take it off but um, you know we have basically the same type of players right what we really need to do is uh, expand the scouting range a little bit more and maybe we need to start going around so there is another way you can do this there are a couple ways right you can go over to American Samoa and uh, take a look at the national team um, there we go look at the senior squad and uh, we'll just organize this here by position and look and see what we have yeah Palma Fetual we know about him already we're not going to go back in for him. He's not going to want us anymore. Walter Potty, we know about. He's not going to want to come back to our team anymore, right? Um, we've already burned bridges with a bunch of these players who, frankly, were not really that good to start off with. So, um, I mean, I don't know what else to say about that. We can look at the um, other squads that they have, you know, maybe the under-23s. Look, there are a whole bunch of left backs on here. Uh, Heleta, we can try to go in for this guy. Let's see if he wants to come over here and see. And again, you know, instead of uh, wasting a whole bunch of time, like actually looking into this guy, we'll just bring him on over. There's Fa Moana, who's uh, gone back down to uh, the uh, under 18 squad after uh, that awful performance. And uh, let's see about this guy, Jared Sasala. I bet he's not going to want to um, come over at all. Um, so what we're probably going to do is actually fully scout him. See, I can't just go ahead and sign him because he's under a youth contract. Actually, I'm not sure if we want to scout him. I just realized that we've realized that he's got a, a big, or we've already seen that he's got a big inconsistency uh, set up there. So um, I think we're going to end up uh, canceling that uh, scouting assignment, and uh, we'll worry about that some other day. We could look at this guy, Joseph Collins, but he doesn't like big matches. Again, we play a lot of big matches. We need players who can actually show up when it counts. Um, and then this is just kind of what you do. You know, you go through this. We could look at Petuliki grade. Nope, inconsistent. Nope, we don't want him. We can look at this guy. Looks okay. But, um, oh, look, and he will actually want to come over to us. So uh, we'll pull this guy on as well. The thing is that there's no there's no penalty for bringing this guy over and then discovering he's not good and then at the end of the season just releasing him, right? And so that's the reason why we're doing this. August Moy, of course, we looked at before. We're not going to go back in for a guy who we already know is not good enough to be on the squad. Sonny Twa, we could go in for this guy and see he wants to come over too. So, you know, eventually we will find, you know, guys who we can just pull in just so that we have bodies who could potentially play a left, left back so that we don't have to play a guy who keeps losing matches for us. And, uh, you know, we'll see what we can do from there. Um, the other thing that we can do, of course, is we can always go into uh, the uh, competition screen here, go over to, like, Lionheart and look and see um, who they have in their senior squad and do the exact same thing, right? You can look at this guy, Joe Seong, um, and uh, see if he was willing to come over, and it looks like he might be, and so we can pull him on over as well. You know, and then just go through the teams and do the same thing. Now, of course, if we were not playing in an amateur team, if we were playing, like, in a real league, 
I wouldn't be doing it like this. Instead, I'd be like, okay, well, we're going to, uh, you know, try to conserve our money and we have to actually worry about the budget and stuff instead of being like, oh, yeah, whatever. You only live once. You know, I'm just going to go sign every left back that I can see that I don't know anything about and figure out which ones are good and which ones are bad, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, that's sort of the way that it is. This is one of those uh, ways in which you can find players who might um, might be good enough to play for your team uh, without having to uh, wait all that time for uh, the uh, scouts to figure out who's good and who's bad. Sometimes, too, the scouts will be wrong. But in my experience, they're not going to be wrong so much when it comes to uh, those uh, little uh, icons that show up at the bottom. Usually the scouts are going to be wrong in terms of like what the player's potential is. They're going to get it wrong there. You know, this guy actually had great potential. They thought he had horrible potential and stuff like that. But really, if that shows up as inconsistent, you're not going to suddenly discover that, no, this player is actually consistent. Now, I mean, he's going to be inconsistent, right? And uh, that's what you want to stay away from. Anyway, there you go. That's kind of what the plan is going forward. Um, it was a good season. I hope that we'll be able to finish in uh, second place. We'll see tomorrow if we can do that or not. I do think that we'll be able to come up with a good finish to this season. It's just a shame because that's a match that we really should have won against a team that we should have destroyed. Um, and uh, I'm really, really puzzled as to why we didn't win that one. So uh, the other thing you'll see happen here in the off season is we're going to rework this tactic yet again. As much fun as this is, I'm worried about this midfield combination not really working out that well. So... Um, with that, I will talk with you again uh, tomorrow. Bye-bye.